We get a moment before the start of uh, tonight's matchup with Anoka taking on Champlain Park with uh, the Anoka head coach, Ellie Heinrichs. And Ellie, uh, what's the mindset and what would you describe that mindset of your team and, and their approach after that nice win over after Blaine? Yeah, we, we've been so energized these last couple games in our season, and we're just really hoping to carry this energy from our bench, from all of our underclassmen coming to support us out here on a beautiful night in Champlain to maybe pull an upset. Terrific. Hey, you're not only coaching, but you also played uh, lacrosse in high school for Andover from 2011 to 2014. Uh, what did you take away in terms of getting yourself prepped and how you can relay that to the team? Yeah, so I started playing at Anoka as a ninth grader, and... I really lean on that experience to relate to all these girls. I mean, like, I was in your shoes. I dropped the ball. I didn't pick up the ground ball, and that's okay. We just have to learn from our mistakes and move on to the next play, and they really relate to that. Well, you've got Alm. She's been bringing some juice and scoring punch as well as to several others. Uh, how do you get themselves ready to take on this number one seed, the Champlain Park Rebels, and what do you expect? Yeah, we really leaned on the game earlier in the season, which didn't turn out as best as we hoped for, but we scored the first goal in that matchup earlier in the season, and we silenced their bench, so we're hoping to do that again tonight and bring that power. Thanks for joining us, and good luck tonight. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Well, the thunderstorms have blown over. However, there is the presence of tornadoes here at the Champlain Park High School as they get ready to take on the Rebels and Girls. High School Lacrosse coming your way next on QCTV. To the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, oh, yes. yes. Scores out of the flex. Yes. The Denver Huskies win their first state championship. Good evening and welcome to Rebels Stadium. It's sunny, it's warm, we have a bit of a breeze. And as you heard a moment ago, section girls lacrosse, number one Champlain Park, hosting number nine in Oka, tornadoes four and 10 overall. The Rebels 12 and two Champlain Park in their home white, the tornadoes in their road maroon. We're just about ready to go. Steve Thompson, Joe Rulin, and our great QCTV crew, Reese Hagenbart, will take the opening face-off for Champlain Park, and Layla Alm will take the opening face-off for the Anoka Tornadoes. The Tornadoes defending the goal down to our right. That is Jaden Schultz, and the goal down to our left, Paige Hagenbart, 12-2 uh, and two this year. She's had a hand in every game this year for the Rebels, and we are just about underway. Lights are on, Doubt will need him, and that popped in the air. And there's a ground ball battle, and it's controlled by the Tornadoes to get us started. Abby Moore with a good run up the near sideline. Moore is going to carry. Turned away by the Rebels. Champlain Park averaging almost 15 goals. That one's turned over and stolen by the Rebels. And here they come the other way. Champlain Park, a good run to get started. number 21 on the year and a terrific feed from the side of the net Champlain Park on the board Rebel. and get that first goal on a great transition a clean transition one pass and burying it back of the net there were the Rebels and they take a one nothing lead yeah, great feed to the front. Engstrom wide open. Number 21 on the year, 20 goals, 12 assists for the junior. And right back to the middle, it'll be Layla Alm, the senior captain, taking the face off for Anoka. An important part of the game, Joe, as we know, you got to control face offs. And that one's won cleanly by Hagenbart. Here comes Reese Hagenbart, powering her way to the right side. And she'll set it up right back into the middle. Another opportunity there, but hanging on is Engstrom. And we get a foul, and this one's probably going to come inside that eight-meter line, and this will be a free position. So Engstrom off to a fast start. Let's see if she can get number two right out of the gate. 
Does she charge the net or does she just step and shoot? We'll see. She gives it up and there's a goal. Beautiful feed over to Lauren Schindelbeck, her 33rd of the year. And it's 2-0 Rebels right out of the gate, Joe. Oh, beautiful dime by Ingstrom that time. Got the goal, now she has an assist. And it is just a magnificent execution off of the dime and that goal. Again comes to Lauren Schendelback, as you mentioned, Steve. Goal number 33, she has already over 100 points in her career and just points away from, or goals away from trying to get to at least 100 goals in her career. But they have power point and the Rebels can, you know, punch and pack a punch scoring wise. They have four players on the team with over 30 goals this season. That face off is grabbed by Anoka. Good job by Abby Moore turning and running. And they give it up and Anoka trying to get into attack mode. And they get it right in front. And there's a quick shot in the goal. And that's Jenna Krakow, her 16th of the year. Great run off that face off win. And Krakow gets Anoka on the board. So we've had some fireworks early. Krakow goes pow pow. And that's a jailbreak that's going on here early at Champlin Park as we have three goals here in the opening minutes. And uh, it's a great job by Anoka to quickly counter and uh, reciprocate that goal, four and 10 on the season for the Tornadoes. But they have an outscored in that first half, 50 to 100 coming into tonight. So great to get that goal, cuts the deficit in half. Krakow picks up goal 16. Annabelle Johnson coming in, leading scorer for the team. Had it there off of the phase off and now Annabelle Johnson will get it back. 33 goals, 34 assists. Schindelbeck's goal tied her at the team lead with 33 in the middle. And that's caught and scored by Reese Hagenbart. Hagenbart grabbed it up high, goes down low. 3-1 Rebels. I hardly think that's going to be her last goal of the evening. 35 on the season now for Reese Hagenbart. And she tallies that third goal. And now... It puts the Rebels back up by two, three to one. And Steve, we're just 23-15 still remaining in this first half. A buck 45 has gone off the clock. Four goals in one of 45. Hagenbart, a moment ago, number 35. Annabelle Johnson, overall points coming in 33 and 34. 33 goals, 34 assists. And face-offs have already been pivotal. And Reese Hagenbart pops it in the air. It's a ground ball, and it's oh. grabbed there by Moore. She got <laughs> hit up high. And I was I, covering my head on that uh, that for the ball, but uh, that'll be a yellow. That that'll be a yellow. And Schindelbeck, I believe. Yeah, Lauren Schindelbeck is going to deliver that the side, Come over with that foul, that personal foul. And now Moore will have it for Anoka. So she has been right around the face-off circle. And a chance for the Tornadoes to get one back. They got beat by Champlin Park 21 to three a month ago, May 1st. Here we are on June 1st in the section quarterfinals. Moore is gonna send it over the middle and that's picked off. Picked off by Annabelle Johnson. She'll fire it ahead quickly. Here's Engstrom. Engstrom has a goal already. Engstrom to the 12-meter line, and then we'll go over to the side and set it up. Out to Annabelle Johnson in the middle. And now they swing it around to the near side. Champlin Park. There's a ground ball. Scooped up neatly. Fed it. This shot of the game. Rail trying to go top corner. Couldn't sneak it in. Here's a nice feed inside. That's a shot and a goal. That's Megan Peter, number 18. Peter's Megan Peter. Yeah, one of the lone seniors on the squad. And she counters, gets into the action, and scores her 18th. Time of that goal, 2.32. So we have had five goals in the first two minutes and 32 seconds of this game. Buckle up. <laughs> Away we go. <laughs> and it is. I had mentioned right, the Rebels came in outscoring their opponents 209 to 57. That means they're averaging 14 points a game. 
Uh, and and uh, I'll tell you, for Anoka, they're averaging about uh, six goals a game versus the points. And uh, the Rebels have already been lighting it up at 4-1, now a three-goal lead. You see some great movement by the Rebels, and here comes Alm. Layla Alm, senior captain, 27 goals, three assists. What a year for her. This is Ella Hennis on top. And Anoka got a win in that playing game in the opening round of the section tournament. And they beat the Blaine Bengals in a tight one. Now the final there, 12 to 11. They beat OPC in the regular season finale at Goodrich. We had that on QCTV. They played well that night. They have won three of four. So Anoka has certainly picked it up, winning three of their last four games that are now four and ten on the year, and the Tornadoes set it up. And if they can avoid turnovers, they have some skill. Here's Alm. Alm a good player. Length. And swings it off to the right. And here's Ella Hennis again. Hennis tries to dodge, had it knocked away by Annabelle Johnson, put on the ground. That's Rickley. Rickley grabs it, feet into the middle a little too far, comes back to Alm, and we are going to get a foul there. It'll be in between the 12 and the 8, or is it on the 8? So Layla Alm a free position, and a chance for Paige Hagenbart, the goalie here, to make a big save. Here's Alm, 27 on the year. She'll go into the middle. Can't get a shot away. It actually went down low. Blocked by Hagenbart. Didn't look like she was going to be able to get a shot away, and she did. Yeah, nice kick save. Good block by Hagenbart. I mean, Ooh, both no. these goalies are freshmen coming in. And Hagenbart comes in with uh, a goals against at a pretty stingy 4.22 in terms of uh, lacrosse goalies. 12 and 2 this year. Save percentage, 50%. That one's turned over, grabbed by Champlin Park. And they'll turn it the other way. And this is Peter on the run. Peter has a goal. Four different players have scored for Champlin Park. Peter continues her run, sets it up. Goal line extended left. Looks for a cutter in the middle. That was Annabelle Johnson who went by. And now further out. This is Schindelbeck at goal number two. They get it inside the goal. For Champlin Park, they got it down low. Good ball movement there. And they get it to Rail. This is Rail. Railer first of the game. 24th of the season here. You get a look at it. A little quick spin cycle move by Rail to get some uh, spacing and finds the back of the net. And as I said, 24th of the season. And the Rebels are now up by four with 20 minutes remaining here in this uh, first half. Yeah, and a lot of skill and a lot of scoring, as you mentioned, Joe, among some of these uh, younger players. And Jeff Johnson really has it going on. The number one seed in this section, and over the two, Centennial, the number three. But I tell you, they had a chance to uh, take home the conference. They had a tough loss against Maple Grove. Yeah, got off to a slow start in that game and battled back. But, but it's the type of team that looks like they're they're angry after that loss. They're coming out with some fight, and also they're not uh, taking Anoka at all for granted. They're coming out with some feisty, spark-like play. So 5-1, uh, you can see that sometimes a loss like that adds that tenacity to the team. Schindelbeck's going to control over on the far side. Player went down. The Anoka Tornado player went down over there at midfield, and Champlin Park's going to hang on. They're up 5-1. Just over five minutes into this section quarterfinal, section seven. And here comes Champlin Park on the attack. Engstrom had the opening goal. They get it into the middle again. That one's blocked away. And it comes to the goalkeeper. And a good job by Jaden Schultz holding her ground. Schultz uh, edging up closer to 100 saves on the season. That clear to the near side went out. Tried to get it to Kendall St. Hilaire, but too far. Rebels get it. Just an example. The last time these two teams played, Steve, you mentioned it was uh, Anoka with a tough loss, 21 to 3, but Schultz faced 40 shots on goal in that game. Here's Callie Gunderson trying to dodge into the middle, had it bumped away. Anoka fighting for it, battled for the ground ball, and it's ultimately going to go into that circle around the goal, and the goalie's going to pick it up. 
And that's going to be Jaden Schultz, just a ninth grader, as you mentioned, Joe. Battle of ninth grade goalies. And I, I think anytime someone's willing to step in to a lacrosse goal, the coach is like, y you're it. She's also uh, a hockey player as well for the Tornadoes. Here comes Champlin Park again on the attack. And this is Megan Peter. And Peter's going to go down behind the net. That X position. Work out of there and go over to the other side. She favors that left side and will spend a lot of time over there. Out on top, Schindelbeck. And now Peter again. Great playmaker over there. Feed behind the net, trying to get to the front. Hagenbart. Shot goes wide. That was Reese Hagenbart. And it went just wide. And Oka had a player deep, and the Tornadoes are going to hang on. They're going to try the long clear. Lizzie Schoeknecht gets it out there. It's grabbed by Rickley. Rickley put it on the ground. This is Caitlin Booth. She tries to control Champlin Park after the ground ball. And the Tornadoes are going to grab it and turn and run the other way. It's Tana right up the middle of the field. Good run by Tana. Well, Continues speed. her run. Look at this. Had it fall off her stick. Then St. Hilaire had a shot attempt but fanned on it. Rebels begin their run back the other way. That's a good clear ahead. Here's Engstrom. Engstrom will move forward. Waiting for help. It's a heck of a run by Tana. She almost yeah, oh, went the sure. distance and just a burst of speed. And just before either passing it or taking a shot, it dropped out of that pocket. Here's Peter. Near side, I down low. Feeling you'll see a lot of substituting, even down there for the interviews before the game. It was hot on that turf. They get it in the middle again, and another goal for Champlin Park. They're up 6-1. to one. Great feed inside Champlin Park, moving it well. Seeing a lot of motion, a lot of motion by the Rebels, and did I hear that goal was Rail, her yeah, second? Yeah, number two, Rail second of the game, 25th of the year. First Rebel to score two here in the game tonight. That's Alana Rail. Here's Peter behind the net. Terrific feed, catch and shoot. That's, that's great. And once again, you got to give Peter an assist on that. She is a wonderful playmaker for the Rebels. Yeah, she's so quick and agile. She can move well with that ball and then dish out the dimes left and right. Yeah, and putting it right on the stick, right where it needs to be. Rail just had to catch that one step and shoot and get the goal. Some baseball games going on tonight also currently and over. Huskies are down three to one, top of the six to Centennial. That's coming to our way from Jim Childs. I'll see if Pete Hayes will give us an Anoka update. That pass goes, actually they're gonna rule a shot attempt. Champlin Park's gonna hang on. So the Rebels dominating early in this section quarterfinal. Into the middle, Hagenbart can't get it. Batted around on the ground, Peter fighting for it. And finally, Champlin Park is gonna control over on the far side. Good job there by Miley Jurisek, 11 goals, four assists. Jurisek gets it further down low. There's a quick shot, Schindelbeck over the shoulder, her second of the game, and it's 7-1 Rebels, wow. Great shot. What a laser, top shelf, catch and release. And she burned that one right by the Anoka goalie and Schultz, but nothing she could do. And the ball, when it goes that high, you have that stick and that net ready to go. Around the hip, maybe midsection, but to lift it that quickly, impossible to catch a ball with that type of velo on it. Champlin Park scored five in a row. They had the first two, Anoka battled back, got a goal. And now Champlin Park up seven to one here in half number one. Yeah, the only one we haven't heard from, and we will, is Johnson, Annabelle Johnson, second in the team in goals with 33, but now uh, it's actually been uh, Schendelbeck. He's at third, but she's a uh, phenomenal. Annabelle Johnson, over 200 points in her career with Champlin Park, and my understanding is she's actually also not only 
a top player. She's also top of her class currently. Yeah, great balance, lead scoring for Champlin Park. And a sister who plays at Northern Michigan. There's lacrosse there. That one on the ground, Champlin Park's gonna control. And that's stolen for the moment back by Ella Hennis. So Hennis is gonna win that battle. Hennis tries to send it to Alm and it's picked off. Champlin Park right back on the ground, taken back by Pavarud for the Tornadoes. Pavarud's gonna work to the right side. Pavarud also a good goalie when it comes to hockey. Got right back on the ground, Annabelle Johnson back to help out. She's gonna try a run up the far side, put it on the ground. And there was a foul by Anoka. And Champlin Park's gonna move it ahead. That was a nifty pass. And now they get it to Hagenbart. Hagenbart on the run in front. That goes just wide. And they're gonna give it to Anoka. Good hustle there by the Tornadoes. Joke connect to get there and get it back for Anoka. Clear to the near side. Rickley grabs it, sends it ahead. Here's Alm. Alm can cover a lot of ground in a short period of time. You can see it there, what a run. Alm right down the middle of the field trying to find a little room. Alm this season has scored four goals in a game three times and their season highs six goals. That was against Coon Rapids. This is Moore. Moore shoved out of there by the Rebels defensively over to the left. That's Hennis. Moore has it again. Good dodge. Gets it into the middle. Goes toward the net and through. And the Tornadoes are going to hang on. Under 14 to go. Half number one. Champlin Park quickly out of the gate. Two goals in the first 110. And I'll lead this one 7-1, to one, Joe. And the other three quarterfinals tonight in Section 7, Chisago Lakes and Forest Lake. The winner of that will play the winner of this one. And that would be Tuesday. Champlin Park's able to prevail. It would be here. And then, of course, Andover and Centennial playing tonight. The number two and the number three on a collision course in the other semifinals, which would be if both win at Andover on Tuesday night. Actually, tonight, I hate to cry, uh, Andover's taking on Spring Lake Park. That's right. That's right. But Andover and Centennial are on a collision course. Yes. They're playing separate teams. That's what I meant, is that and if they both ahead. win, they would play on Tuesday night. And that... Stolen I away by Champlin Park, Annabelle Johnson. We had a co chance to cover that first game between Centennial and Andover, and Centennial took home a win. They're a strong team. Here come the Rebels. Good run to here by Jurisek. Jurisek hanging on. Terrific run. Great speed. Gets down behind the net. And will set it up. Jurisek, 11 goals, 4 assists. There's one in front. Shot by Hagenbart. That was blocked. And it's picked up. Peter with it. She's done some terrific playmaking over there. Good feet into the middle. It's caught over the shoulder. And a goal for Engstrom. Number two in the game for her. 8-1 Rebels. Well, she held that stick up high. Didn't get the spot, but she got a great location. And that accuracy paid off for Engstrom. As you mentioned, second of the game. 22nd of the season for Engstrom. Snapped that off. Also went top shelf. Put it with a peanut butter. With 12.04 to go, back to an 8-1 lead now here for the Rebels. Uh, the other game, Centennial playing Grand Rapids Greenway tonight in Lionel Lakes. So a good, solid section. Champlin Park, the number one, and looked the part tonight up 8-1 with 12.01 to go in the first half. That one... Right off the face-off, Annabelle Johnson grabs it. And she'll get it back. She has not scored in the game tonight. That could certainly change. Yep, <laughs> yep, in terms of a goal, I think she has one assist. But she's walking it back out, kind of taking a deep breath. As uh, Schindle back, back out there as well. But 8-1 uh, lead as we approach 11 and a half to play. 
Rail, Schindelbeck, and Engstrom have two goals apiece. And here's Johnson. And that one sneaks by the goalie. And she gets her first of the night. Annabelle Johnson, number 34 on the year. Well, you just mentioned it, and she counters and answers with the goal. It looks like she went low on that shot, and it may have taken a while to get through that five hole. Yep, she did. Made the initial shot and save when she bounced and went down to her knee to try to contain it. That is, uh, in uh, Schultz, it rolled past that goal line. So now Johnson answers and scores the ninth goal for the Rebels tonight, her 34th of the season. Right back to the middle. Reese Hagenbart's done an outstanding job. On the faceoffs, popped into the air. That ground ball goes over to the right, scooped up there neatly by Reese Kristoff. She got hit up high. That's going to draw. I don't think we're going to get a yellow on that, but Anoka's going to hang on on that foul on Champlin Park. Here's Kristoff in on the right and turned away. Good spin move there. Terrific dodge on the edge to get by Dale. Noka hanging on, good pressure by Champlin Park defensively. And the Tornado's in maroon on the attack down to our left. Ground ball, good defense. And Paige Hagenbach picks it up. But I think Anoka may hang on to it, and they will. They will. Trying to sustain a little possession time here, here for Anoka. And Give their defense and their goalie a bit of a break as we approach 10 to play here in the first half. Nice breeze from the southeast. We had thunderstorms move through, but sunny skies here. Rebel Stadium. Brand new scoreboard is up on the south end of the stadium. It'll be in service for fall sports, boys and girls soccer, football here at Rebel Stadium. Good pickoff and a steal on the yeah. backside there by the Rebels, and now a quick outlet on the transition. Yeah, nice job there by Eleanor Gregornik to get that toward the net and clear it. Now they finally get it out of there, and the Rebels in white begin their run left to right into the breeze. And here comes Champlin Park. Good run here by Schindelbeck. Schindelbeck up the near sideline with some room. Going toward the net was Jurisek, and now they're just gonna calm it down and set it up, and why not up nine to one, closing in on nine to go here in this first half. Kelly just jumped back in here for Anelka. You'll see some substitutions here coming and going on the fly in this, this weather. I think it was 88 degrees. It's very hot on that turf, and now the Rebels trying to set up this offensive push. Champlin Park sends it into the front on the ground. That was Schindelbeck, and it's going to come to the goalie, Schultz. She'll grab it, Schultz. Hagenbart in her face. Clears it out to the right, and that one's going to go out of bounds. Champlin Park's going to get it right back. That's the tough thing. You can lock up the save, but those outlet passes are critical. They've got to be quick and clean. Jarrett is sec behind the net. Going to set it up. Yeah, and Reese Hagenbart, you know, right there with the reach in the length makes it very difficult for the goalie to have an option to clear. Now they get it on top. Schindelbeck, a couple of goals already. At goal number two for Champlin Park. They get it in the middle. There's a save by Schultz. Good save on a shot down low by Engstrom. She was looking for number three. There's a good quick clear, and it's caught on the run. And here come the, the Tornadoes. Good move into the middle of the field. That was Booth. And she put it on the ground, but she's going to hang on. Caitlin Booth just a sophomore. One goal. We saw her against OPC. She made some nice plays. Here's Yelly. Kelly gives it up on the right. I like that pass, just a quick chirp on and good. There's a goal. And I think that's Krakow again. It is her second of the game. Well, they move it quickly down and 
Got it in, and that show a uh, shot down low beat Paige Hagenbart. She's got number two. I love that pass so up ahead by Helly as she just kind of chipped it. A good clean snap pass ahead and taking that thing back of the net again. A nice goal. Way to close it up. And we're going to get a timeout, and everyone's going to get a breather here. But uh, once again, Krakow again with the Papal, right? Her second goal, but a nice way to close it. Number 17 on the year for her. but And I think that strategy for Anoka is one that makes a lot of sense. Move it down quickly. Don't allow Champlin Park to get organized defensively. And they made it work twice. Krakow, her second of the game. And it's now 9-2 Champlin Park. And Pete Hayes just gave me an update. Looks like uh, Anoka defeated Duluth East 4-2 this afternoon. So they advance on. And meanwhile, it uh, looks like Centennial is up four to one, and it's the top of the seventh. So, update there, but now you're getting to see just, hey, some good level of play here as, as uh, Anoka's really been playing their best lacrosse towards the end of the season. Two wins in a row, and they've won three of their last four and you're starting to see some offensive continuity come together. But it's also the draws. We talk about that a lot, Steve. The, you know, we talk about the value of winning that draw. And here's to take a look at some of the stats up here. The draws for Anoka, they've won 119 to 114. And then we've got to the draws, 209 to 57. And typically, when Champlain Park wins those draws, I find it ironic that they have also outscored their opponents by a near margin as well. Records are four and 10, 12 and two, 93 goals to 209 goals in the season. Meanwhile, you see the freshman goalies between the pipes for both of these squads. So they have longevity there. Goal leaders, you got Alm, as we mentioned tonight, it's been Krakow, she's put up two goals. And of course, uh, Hagen Bart, team leader but not far behind there's three other of her teammates with 30 plus goals on the season here's the tradition here's the info piece for you the need to know by joe since 2011 champlain park has won every contest they're 11 and 0 versus anoka that's since 2011. yeah quite a rivalry and they could make it uh, 12 in a row if they're second win in a row thank you for that need to know uh graphic up there that's uh, my ego needed that yeah, and, you know, you, you think about this rivalry in all sports since Champlain Park opened in the early 90s. You know, for one school to uh, dominate a rivalry like that is pretty extraordinary for Champlain Park. Really I went back also trying to figure out and talk to the athletic directors as well. The first year that both of these teams started the girls' uh, program. And... Uh, you know, I think we came up with that finals about two, 2007. 2007 was when uh, both of these programs started the girls' high school lacrosse. Ground ball off the faceoff, controlled by Champlain Park. Hagenbart gets it back, good feet into the middle, and it's caught by Johnson. She'll begin her run. Champlain Park had scored seven in a row. Tell that Anoka goal by Krakow. Into the middle, caught, quite a pass, and quite a shot. And that one blocked away by Schultz. Champlain Park's going to hang on. Annabelle Johnson tried kind of a backhanded hip high shot, and it didn't fool Schultz, but Champlain Park's going to hang on. This is Angstrom. Now Hagen Bart behind the net. This is Peters. And again, everything. Possession, control here came off that draw. Good run off the post goes Johnson. Ricochets out of there and picked up by the Rebels at Engstrom. She drew iron near his side low. And now Champlin Park right back at it. Shot toward the front. Annabelle Johnson right into the stick at Jaden Schultz. Schultz is going to clear for the Tornadoes far his side. Ground ball battle. And they're going to give it right back to the Rebels. It's a 
Peters a little slow to get up. As she got knocked down over there and that scrum for the ground ball. She's giving up some size to the other players over there and I, you know, bumped but and goes down to the turf. Her speed and her moxie, I would say, far surpasses some of that height and that size as she's determined to get open. Peters charges in, gives it up. That was on the side, off the stick of Engstrom. Rebels have it, double team comes. Rickley put it on the ground. Rebels tenacious right now with the big lead. Now this is Hagenbart into the middle, caught by Rail, two goals. Rail has it, gives it up on the right. Schindelbeck right back into the middle. Oh, good give and go, a little too far. Rail gets it side of the net. The goalie Schultz couldn't control. Rail sends it out, this is Peters. Peters cut into the middle, spinning, shooting, and scoring. I think that's Jurisek in the middle. Number 20, and it is her first. Good move for Jurassic as she, a nice little quick spin, turn, fire. No time to locate the net, just kind of knowing from an intuitive standpoint where that goal was, and she snapped that. And able to beat the Anoka goalie and put up in the double digits now the 10th goal of this first half just under five to play so champlain park gets to double digits in this first half they piled up the goals this year averaging just shy of 15. they have 10 here in the first half we still have 458 to go all out there for anoka and hagenbart for champlain park i think hagenbart has taken every face off and that one flies out of there and anoka's gonna get it Close with it, leading the team in uh, those duels this season. It's very close, but Schindelbeck has 65 coming into the game, dual wins, and then 62 for Annabelle Johnson, and Hagenbark with 48. So here come the Tornadoes, and Alm's gonna get a free position on the left. Oh, by the way, Alm is the team leader in those face-offs for the Tornadoes, first and goals. Alm. Oh, oh, what a shot from the side. Love it. Oh. Beat Paige Hagenbart, near side, kind of faked. And then we'll see the replay here. That's number 28 on the year for Alm. I'm going to age myself. It was like MacGyver. She had to be innovative with that shot production here. Side wasn't open, up high wasn't, so she sweeps it down below, and it didn't score low. It looked like it went by hip high, but just from her release, it was tough there for Hagen Bart to get a clean look at it. So the first goal of the night for Alm, her 28th of the season. Yeah, that after Jurassic got the goal, and Oka answers right back 36 seconds later, and Alm's out in the middle against Reese Hagen Bart. And that one's popped into the air, and Hagenbart catches it out of the air. Great job. Hagenbart begins her run and gives it up. Well, the impact of winning that draw. Jurassic to the cutter. It's on the ground. Engstrom couldn't catch, but Engstrom did pick up the ground ball. Good dodge. Gets it behind the net. Hagenbart works away to the front, trying to get his shot away. Can't. Needs a clear path. And now she'll try and dodge out of a double team. Give it up. Jurassic shots blocked by Schultz. That may have hit the post. Ground That's ball it. again. And you got to like that with the offense here for the Rebels. Not one player just hangs on to that ball forever until they get open to take a shot. They have some other options out there. And you can tell they're looking half the time to see who else might be that cutter. Foul is going to go, I believe, on Hennis. That means Champlin Park. Annabelle Johnson's going to hang on. She has one goal out at the 12. Gives it up to her left. Gets it back in the middle. Shot goes over the top. Couldn't get a lot on it, but it's run down by Hagenbart. Hagenbart's going to begin her run far side. Guarded there by Show Connect. Champlin Park in control up 10-3. Under three to go. 
here in this first half. Rebels trying to get to the front. Schindelbeck couldn't get his shot away. I was looking for Peter, but she's on the bench right now. And now it's Hagenbart again behind the net. Hagenbart, cutter in the middle, Johnson the goal. Oh, what a feed, a one-timer. Second of the game for Johnson off the assist from Hagenbart. Wow, they just kept constant movement and motion. And you're right, Steve. I was gonna say a one-timer or an alley-oop, but great location for the pass up high. That ball barely made it into the pouch before she pulled the trigger and snapped it off from the pocket. Whoa. Good. Everyone's involved. They work it around the clock, work it around the parameter. Several players touching that ball. Good clean passing and capped off with an exclamation point. And that the goal for Annabelle Johnson, number 35 on the season. So fifth, fourth Rebel to score two in the game. And of course you have Krakow with two for the Tornadoes. And Reese Hagenbart controlling again off another face off. The Rebels are gonna set it up. Here's Rail, a couple of goals, back into the mix. On the ground, Schindelbeck fighting for it. Schindelbeck gets a shot away. Blocked by Schultz, good job. Rebels are gonna control Schultz Hagenbart. Is, yeah, well beyond 100 saves on the season after this first half. And she was able to get the stick down. Controlled by Champlin Park. That's Jurassic, has a goal. Now over to the near side. That's Schindelbeck again. Two minutes remaining in the first half. I'll tell you, watch the body language, too, of the head coach for Anoka, Ella Heinrichs. And uh, Ellie, she doesn't have, she's just positive, smiling, upbeat, uh, and not dragging and rolling her eyes at play. She's just got that as a coach. and. That can infuse a team and increase the effectiveness of that whole culture of the program. Champlin Park with it, getting her run. Kelly Gunderson, Champlin Park moving it, trying to find a cutter. That one popped out of there, still controlled on the ground. Player goes down, scooped up by Anoka. Good job there by Booth. Booth saw the double team, cleared it ahead. That one on the ground, that's gonna go out of bounds. Champlin Park's gonna get it back. Champlin Park really pressuring, not not allowing Anoka much breathing room. Rebels have it. Rebels this season, I mentioned their scoring ratio, but uh, they've outscored their opponents 40 to 15 in the first half, and then 169 to 42 in the second. Rail and uh, no, Champlin Park's going to hang on. There was a foul on Anoka. And Rail's going to continue her run down behind the net. Champlin Park, 12 and 2 overall, 11 and 1 in conference play. Here's to the front, shot and a goal. Marching right to Rail the front the was a Rail. Yeah, number 26 on the year. He just walked right in front to pick up number three. <laughs> well. It's just uh, amazing how many scoring options they have on this team. 26 on the season for Rail. Schindelback has already picked up her 37th and 38th of the season. Johnson has picked up her uh, 34th and 35th. Hagenbart has already picked up her 35th. Uh, Peters has her 18th. Engstrom as well continues to climb, 22nd on the season. If you have to make a decision on trying to shut down or contain at least one or two, that just doesn't do it. There's too many other scoring options for the Rebels. Another phase soft ground ball. Can the Tornadoes control? Yes. And that's Cadence Jacobson doing a nice job. Feeds it ahead. Kristoff, here come the Tornadoes on the move. Tana. Shot and a goal! Tana caught it. She's got good speed and went right in and gets the goal. Look at this move. Tenacious and storms the net. 
And Jeff. releases it, got the deflection, making that initial save look like was Hagenbart, but uh, deflection maybe off the inside part of that post. Nonetheless, it's a goal. Tana answers for her ninth of the season, her first here tonight. Yeah, good move by Tana. So Anoka put four on the board. Coming in to this quarterfinal as big underdogs, the number nine seed against the number one Champlain Park Rebels. And that was a good play. And once again, another goal where they move quickly and don't allow the Rebels to get set defensively. They just take it right at it. Here's Kristoff picking up the ground ball, being guarded by Annabelle Johnson. Now she's getting help. Triple team comes, and she got hit up high, and that's the end of the half. And Kristoff got hit right on top of the head. And I don't know if that's going to result in a yellow. So we're going to go to the half. Champlin Park leading at 12-4. Rail leads away with three for the number one seed. And by the way, Joe Rulin coming up has a chance to visit with Champlin Park head coach Jeff Johnson. We'll do that here on QC TV. Okay, you don't need an audio check? <laughs> okay, good. And we get a moment with head coach of the Champlain Park Girls Lacrosse Squad, Jeff Johnson. And uh, Jeff, first off, congratulations on that 12-2 and two season. Yeah, thank you very much. We've uh, we've worked hard this year. The girls came ready to play. You know, before the season ever started, they were working out in the off season, uh, not only on their conditioning and their weight training, but, you know, certainly uh, put in plenty of time with their stick skills as well. Well, you certainly have some scoring juice. You have uh, four of the young ladies on your team with 30 goals or more. Of course, your daughter just 12 points away from 200 points in her career. Uh, could you imagine that horsepower develop into what it's become? No, I mean, it, it's been a long process. Uh, a lot of these girls I started coaching when they were 12 years old, and it's it's been a process all the way through. You know, they're finally getting to that point. They're they're hungry for uh, a successful season. We're, we're hungry to hopefully be able to take it right through our section, but you know, we have, we're taking it one play at a time, and obviously tonight we have Anoka, and they're gonna, they're gonna give us everything we want, so. Uh, number one seed, and again, you're taking on Anoka. Any additional pressure, and what do you expect from Anoka tonight? Yeah, I think the pressure is always there. Anytime you get into these section games when, uh, you know, you start gripping your sticks a little bit too tight, and you know, we, we faced that with a tough Maple Grove team down the stretch in, in our last matchup. We learned some things from that. Um, we were uh, probably less less uh, composed in that game than we have been all year, and I, I think uh, we so we learned. Uh, hopefully, we're coming out more composed uh, and a little more relaxed, and realize that we need to take care of the ball, not turn it over, and then let some of our uh, some of our alpha, some of these girls you were talking about that are, are going out and bringing it and scoring 30 goals to to have those opportunities to put the ball in the net. So. Well, hey, good luck tonight. Good luck the rest of the way in three sections as well. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. All right. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. 
Mom was always organized, but she started forgetting to pay her bills on time. And she'd buy the same gifts over and over. Telling the girls about my Alzheimer's diagnosis was really hard. At first, we had our cries, but then we were like, OK, let's make a plan. Early detection gave us time to adapt together. It's so important for you to think about what you can do and making the most of what you have. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. Got it. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Mom was always very self-sufficient, but we started noticing things were off. I was forgetting my responsibilities at work. I told Mom we should visit a doctor. Alzheimer's. It was hard to hear that. Early detection gave us time to seek information and support as a family. I've never felt more connected with mom. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Lovely night here at Champlin Park and Rebel Stadium and the number one seed leads Anoka 12 to four at the half. Atlanta Rail leads away with five, but Champlin Park has numerous multiple goal scorers. Couple for Lauren Schindelbeck, couple in the game for Ella Engstrom. And then of course, Annabelle Johnson has a couple in the game as well. Meanwhile, Jenna Krakow has two for the Anoka Tornadoes in this game and Champlin Park up 12 to four at the half, trying to make it to the semifinals next Tuesday night. And they would be home to either Forest Lake or Chisago Lakes. And they're playing up at Chisago Lakes uh, tonight. So uh, Champlin Park trying to stay home. Meanwhile, the number two and number three on the other side of the bracket, and you see it right there, Joe, number three, Centennial against number six, Grand Rapids Greenway. And then of course, number two, Andover, home against number seven, Spring Lake Park. So the section semifinals Tuesday, section final would be on Thursday. And I, I know Andover and uh, Champlin Park would love to be in that section final next Thursday night. We'll see how it plays out. Centennial's a pretty good team in the middle there. Centennial also part of that trifecta crew. Uh, so I think it's between those three who could end up in the championship between Centennial, Champlain Park, and also with Andover. And other 
action tonight. And over to well, in girls fast pitch softball, a section final. Forest Lake defeated Andover eight to nothing. Forest Lake, number three in Class 4A, only has three losses this whole season. They won state last year. So they're heading back. And meanwhile, Centennial defeated Andover by a score of 7-1 to one in boys baseball. And there's a ground ball. We switch sides. Anoka defending the goal down to our left. That's Jaden Schultz defending the goal down to our right. Champlin Park, Paige Hagenbart. And the Rebels have a big lead as half number two gets underway. Once again, the breeze from the south or blowing from right to left here at Rebel Stadium. There's a catch and a shot and a goal. Megan Peter, number two on the night. Terrific feed in front, and she buried it. Well, it's a benefit of that constant motion out in front, Peter. Again, just that quickness. Picks up her second goal tonight. She is also the lone senior starter and she's committed to Wisconsin River Falls. Well, she'll continue lacrosse there. Also an uh, conference honorable mention in 2022. Nice job, way to cap it up and close it. More of a, a lateral shot released that time and that found its way to the lower 90 to beat Schultz that time for Anoka, 13 to four. Yeah, and super effective going to her right, comes back left with the shot and gets the goal. So uh, Megan Peter right out of the gate. Uh, goal in Champlain Park up 13 to four. By the way, a uh, running time becomes a factor with one more goal scored. Here's Layla Alm, she has a goal. And Layla Alm runs into the middle. Terrific player, 27 goals coming in for the Anoka Tornadoes. This is Ella Hennis. That one popped into the air, goes onto the ground. It's grabbed neatly there by Kendall Rickley. Rickley for the Anoka Tornadoes. And our playoff coverage will continue next week. Uh, I was visiting with Taylor Johnson, and there are uh, graduation ceremonies at uh, Champlain Park and Andover. Down at Maturi Pavilion this year, Mariucci Arena is being renovated. So they'll be at Maturi Pavilion this year. And then, of course, Anoka's graduation scheduled for Goodrich on Monday night. Uh, hopefully some section baseball on Tuesday here on QCTV. We'll, we'll certainly keep you up to date. This is Abby Moore. We're trying to get to the front, turned away. Good job by Champlin Park. Now it's Alm again. Layla Alm. And Anoka, very effective in, in what I would call the fast break. All four goals coming when they, they were able to move quickly down the field before Champlain Park got set defensively. Alm trying to get free. Champlain Park just denied her double teams came. Here's Tana into the middle. Tana with speed. That shot goes wide. Getting a piece of it was Hagenbart. Tana, good quickness in the middle. She has a goal here tonight for the Tornadoes. Here's one into the middle. Goes all the way through. Can Alm run it down? No, she can't get there. And she's a bit frustrated. And Champlain Park's going to get it back, Joe. Well, and you'll see there's some good pressure, a good shot at Tanya. Meanwhile, absorbed kind of a physical shot there at the end of hers, a little slow to get up. And, uh, boy, Anoka could have used that goal just to counter the Rebels, who scored the first goal here of the second half and now lead 13-4. to four. That puts their season total now to 222 goals on the season for the Rebels, and they have just surrendered 61. That is Schindelbeck. Schindelbeck gets it back. Cutter going across was Reese Hagenbart. Well, when you have so many different variables who can close it up and score, it's so tough, and there's an easy way to try to counter or maybe find an advantage if you're the Rebels. There's a kick save by Schultz. Even though the players are marked up, they find that alley. There's a bracket. Defense Alm goes right by that time. Schindelbeck. Schindelbeck works her way to the right. Gets it down low. Hagenbart spins and scores. And that's number two for her, Reese Hagenbart. 
I love that spin. She picked it up, got it, and just kept turning. I mean, she, it was almost like a post move in basketball. She got it inside, faked one way, went the other way on a quick spin cycle move. And Reese Hagenbart, goal 36 on the season. Second here tonight. Yeah, just terrific quickness to spin and shoot and score her second. And now it's 10 goals and time is on the move as we close in on 20 minutes to go. And right back to the middle and it is Hagenbart out there. Just a ninth grader. Mm -hmm. And her sister, a freshman in goal as well. Dynamic duel. This one popped into the air. It was Reese Kristoff. Champlin Park's going to control, and they move it ahead neatly. This is Champlin Park. Echo was over the shoulder a little bit too far, and running it down was Engstrom. Engstrom got the scoring started for Champlin Park. 34 seconds in. Annabelle Johnson on her left. Engstrom spinning. That onto the goal line extended. This is Peter. Peter had a quick goal to get us started here in the half. They move it so well. Cutters. Right out on top, Annabelle Johnson. Good job to switch hands with that stick. Gets it back to the left side. Now she'll go down behind the net. Tries to dodge back in front. Good backhanded or yeah. behind the back pass there. That was slick. Pretty casual, but uh, pretty confident as she shoveled it back. Annabelle Johnson. Pretty nice breeze. Not as much humidity. There's one in the middle. And that shot goes off Engstrom and wide, but Champlin Park's going to hang on. Coming up on 18 and a half to play in the game. Champlin Park led it 12 4 at the break. Talking to Jeff Johnson during the interview. We'll let it go here. Yep. Oh, now off the of side mind. of the net. Hagenbart got a shot away, but tough angle. She'll get back the ground ball. Give it up to Peter. Threw it in front and knocking it down with Schultz. Good job by Jaden Schultz, the goalie, to gather it in in that circle, that crease area. Hagenbart right in her face. Clears it off to the left. That's on the ground. Grabbed by the Tornadoes. Nice job over there by Ella Hennis to grab it. Now they move it forward. Here comes Anoka. They've been good on the break today. Three of their four goals coming on the break. There's one, and it goes through. Annie Yelly gets a goal, and there it is. Another fast break goal for the Tornadoes on the run. Yelly with her first of the night. Yep, first of the night, ninth of the season, and squeeze this one through. Not much of a window. But Helly found it to beat Hagenbart. Goal number five on the night here for Anoka coming into this game. Keeping in mind, Hagenbart is also a freshman with a goals against of just 4.22. So when you're beating her on a goal and finding the back of the net, that state that makes a statement. So goal number nine on the season for Helly. And now they're back to within nine. Anoka at 14-5. Yeah, Anna Yelly going to the University of St. Thomas for engineering. Uh, we learned that on senior night against OPC. So great future in front of her, future Tommy. Great school in St. Paul. That one popped in the air on the ground. And nice grab on the ground by Abby Moore. That was a nice play. The sophomore, a couple of goals. Good speed, gives it up. Chance for the Tornadoes. Here's Yelly again. Put it on the ground, chasing after it. Lily Carver grabs it. And Anoka right back at it. They've been good on the fast break. When they've come down the field and Champlin Park hasn't been able to get set, I, I would venture to say all five of their goals have come that way. I was going to say it was three or four now. It, maybe all five have come on the break. Here's Champlin Park. Peter showing the speed. 
Peter to the left, gets a shot away and scores. Wow, what a burst. What an explosive thing. As that went stronger, her strides got that much stronger and longer. And I'm telling you what, a way to capitalize and finalize that aggressive and tenacious run by Peters. A hat trick for Peters. Yeah, terrific. Gets her to 20 goals on the year. And for the senior, big night here tonight. That was just a, as good a run as you'll see. Got the shot away and scores. Her now it'll second, be Alm yeah. against Hagenbart in the face off. Her second goal here of the second half. Yeah, she opened the scoring 42 seconds in, Joe. And that, 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 that was impressive. I mean, you watched her strides and as she progressed down the field, exploded down the field and just the stronger strides as that went longer. And for me, it would be just the opposite. The longer, I would just kind of uh, take a knee. But uh, you could tell she was destined to close in and finish that run with a goal. There was not going to be any denying Peters. Again, full of a hat trick in her 20th goal of the season. Back, this is, back to a cribbage hand at some cribbage points at 15-5. Rail had it a moment ago. She has three goals. Peter joined that club with her third. Champlin Park tried to get it in front to the cutter. No shot opportunity there for Schindelbeck. Or excuse me, that was Engstrom. And now Champlin Park has it back. And here's Peter. Engstrom, a great job there. She had a scoring chance in an alley, but it shut down. So she spun around, reversed, and got it back out outside the perimeter for her teammates to kind of where they're at now, get that motion, commotion type of thing going. Annabelle Johnson behind the net, tries to work her way to the front. Good move, got knocked down, and she tried to kind of go between the double team and got knocked down, and will this be a free position? Should be, could be a yellow here as well. And she's going to gather herself, and it will be that free position. But a tough angle. Jaden Schultz, the goalie. Annabelle Johnson gives it up to the cutter coming inside, and that is batted away from Engstrom. And now the goalie, Peter, is going to clear to the near side. Good catch by Show Connect, and they get it into the middle. Nice job. Hennis. Hennis with a good run. Hennis with speed. I love that speed. Oh. Burst down the field. Hennis continues that run. She's got about 110 yards in the books already <laughs> no. on this run. Wouldn't you like to have a GPS and that chip? I'm wondering the she's amount gonna of get, steps. She's going to get her steps in today. <laughs> There's Alm in the middle. I, I, not a worry for lacrosse player. Oh, goodness, no. There's Alm in the middle. Couldn't get to the 12, a 12-meter 12 fan. Nice dodge there by Krakow. She had two goals in the first half. Here's Alm. Double team comes. Good block by the Rebels. I'm not sure how she's been able to hold possession. They get it further inside. Krakow caught, but it comes all the way in on Paige Hagenbart, and she'll grab and control. Rebels by 10. Coming up on 13 to go in the game. And Steve, even though the new scoreboard that they have up and I speak with many about it, even though it's not functioning, my eyes kind of default to that, even though we're used to looking to the left. Anyway, as we're the one that's been out there for years that's Peter, functioning tonight. Peter tried to move it ahead, went on the ground, and that's gathered in by Jurassic, who has the goal in the game. And she she's played some good minutes. Good speed. Couple of the Rebel players on the verge of a hat trick. Jurassic is one of those. Rail's already there. That one comes across right into the middle. Caught. And trying to get a shot away was Schindelbeck. And now it's Jurassic again. Engstrom has two. Working the perimeter. Just over to, able to take some minutes. Time off that clock. Schindelbeck 
or uh, Annabelle Johnson into the middle. Johnson Good also job. a team leader with ground balls on the season with 96 coming into the game. Hagenbart's out there. 17 tries to get to the front. They do get it to the front, put on the ground, batted around. Rebels, good body position, are going to pick up that ground ball. And that was Ella Engstrom. There's a shot and a goal. Looks like that may be Gunderson picking up her first tonight, 12th of the season. Yeah, Kelly Gunderson picked up that ground ball. You're right, Joe. Moved into the middle. Great play by Gunderson. Well, and then you notice that great play by maneuver. Uh, and there's a reason, hey, when we talk about leading the team in ground balls and Annabelle Johnson leads in that category. She's also the all-time leader, Annabelle Johnson, in ground balls as well. And there's a reason why she's leader in that and also the all-time leading scorer for Champlain Park. But on that particular run, you got an example of getting first to the ball, picking up that loose change in that ground ball and finding the back of the net for the Rebels to make it 16 to 5. Another big Gunderson. key, right. Reese Hagenbart though, face-offs as well. What, what a force. She has the ability to pop it in the air well, that size, and then uh, come height. out of there and, and pick it up on the fly. That one pops out of there on the ground and Champlain Park's going to control. Hagenbart didn't get to it. It is grabbed by Annabelle Johnson. Sends it into the middle. Quite a catch there by Schindelback. She elevated to pull that one down. Schindelback on a run. Trying to find room. There's Rail in the middle. And she's turned away. Now to the cutter inside. Johnson scores down low. Love it. That was a quick release. She got it up high. Quickly brought it down low. Put it to the turf on a roller. And a one hopper. Number three on the day for Annabelle Johnson. Raises her total to 36 on the year. That was a terrific feed. Goodness, that was. You know, the one thing is you see these Rebel players really elevate, stay focused, and uh, get at it, and then close it up for Johnson. She just keeps making herself available, creating that Visibility and that burst speed. Johnson picks up that goal for, I believe, a hat trick tonight. And her 30, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's a 36 goal. Yep, three to nine, 36 on the year for Annabelle Johnson. 17 to five as we're south of nine minutes to play. Good job on the ground ball again there by Abby Moore. Did a really nice job. Moore put it on the ground right at midfield, and then player got knocked down by her own teammate. Champlain Park's going to control. Right back at it. Jurassic put it on the ground, and she'll get it back over on the right side. So Champlain Park will maintain control and move into the attack mode. Jurassic tried to go around the corner. Cutter in the middle, catching, shooting. That goes wide. That was Lauren Schindelbeck. But while we also talk a lot about that explosive offense for the Rebels, you got to pay some recognition and give some recognition to that defense. You have players back there. Addy Dell, who was all section defender in 2022. They just do their job, get in front. You also have uh, Greg Gornick, all conference, all section defender in 2022. They, they find a way to disrupt offenses and uh, shut down those lanes and, and not allow for a lot of rebounds and second chances on possessions which is a reason why they've been able to hold a lot of their opponents to just a four goal average defensively sweeping hey, that a, one in yeah what a feed inside Schindelback got it inside and the rebels get a goal i think that's jurassic putting it away or was it peter i couldn't tell We'll, we'll see the replay in a moment, but Champlain Park extends their lead to 18 to five. Yeah, I think Let's that take a look. Schindelback with the feed. That was Peters. That's number, Goal number four. Number four for Peter. But such a quick 
third and of the precise half. shot. I mean, as you, if you're a goalie and you have the back offense as they're back to the goalie, you're not sure if they're going to pass it, distribute it, or that spin move, that quick pivot is what they've done tonight. Uh, and it's almost like uh, the post player in basketball. A quick pivot, fake right, go left, and snap it by. There's Jeff Johnson in the huddle. Here's what we got coming up. Uh, Champlain Park and Andover graduations. And once again, that'll be uh, from Maturi Pavilion. Uh, remember that? Mariucci Arena uh, undergoing a remodel. They're making the rink smaller. A uh, Lake Mariucci will now be uh, Mariucci <laughs> Pond. Yes. Uh, then uh, Anoka graduation on Monday, and we hope the weather's good at Goodrich Field. 100 years ago, I think it was actually 100 years ago, I graduated from Anoka, and we had our graduation outside. The weather was lovely. And then the big Father Hennepin Parade a week from tomorrow night. They call it the social event of the year in Champlin, the Father Hennepin Parade. Really? And you'll have it here on QCTV. And then we got Legion Baseball getting our summer schedule started. Maple Grove at Champlin Park right next door. Great facility. Uh, Rebels Field uh, right next door on the 13th. And... I have a feeling we're not done with our spring sports section coverage, but that's to be announced. Taylor's kind of working the numbers and uh, trying to figure out what will fit into a very busy schedule. Well, you, you have brackets and uh, lacrosse, pretty straightforward. Yep. You know, you lose one and you're done. Baseball, you kind of have uh, back brackets that you can come in. Well, what I, I, you know what I call those, Joe? What's that? I call those wrestlebacks. Because <laughs> that's right. what they do they in are, wrestling. They're wrestlebacks. Yes. Yeah, so they have that in baseball, too. Softball is done. Andover yeah. losing today as section championship. Uh, Andover had a great uh, seventh inning. Uh, they were down by three runs and scored four to beat Anoka the other night to make it to the section championship. But Forest Lake, an 8 nothing winner. And the uh, return state champion, of girls fast pitch softball, Forest Lake returns and will head to Mankato. So that one is no longer needed to be figured out. But uh, a few of the others still in the make. Anoka, a nice win baseball today with a win over Duluth East. That coming in stretch from the feed of Pete Hayes. Here's Annabelle Johnson over to the right, gets it inside, spinning, shooting is Schindelback. And that is grabbed by the goalie, Schultz. All right, that, that may be a new goalie in there. It Megan is. Holmgrenson. Holmgrenson is the new goalie for Anoka. Right back the other way. Here's Yelly. Yelly had a nice run and a goal. And Champlin Park gets it back, and that's Annabelle Johnson. See, and you see, again, Annabelle Johnson ends up with it, but that defense manages to diffuse that momentum of an offense coming down. And, uh, you know, mentioned it earlier, but that play of like Addie Dale along with, uh, you know, Greg Gornick, I'm not doing other defenders justice, but uh, they do a great job of moving over. It's a thankless role, but you got to keep the feet moving, closing those shooting lanes, picking up the loose change and the ground balls. But you need that in order to give your offense possession. And uh, with that, it's uh, just a great way you see the offense pays dividends for that defensive play. Champlin Park right back the other way. They put it on the ground, and it's grabbed there by Kendall Rickley for Anoka. Tornadoes will end their season tonight. But... Once again, coming into tonight, had won three of four to close it out. So uh, improvement for Ellie Heinrich's crew here at the end of the season. And, th and that's what you want, your team to get better. And the Tornadoes did get better as the season went along. Here's Rail. Rail's had certainly a nice game. Got her hat trick at the end of the first half. Rebels led it 12 to four at the break. And they've extended their lead to 18 to 5. And we have another foul. And Champlin Park's going to hang on. Trying to see if I can get a score from Centennial. Uh, 
Centennial, the number three seed here in Section 7. And over the number two, Champlin Park, the number one. And they would get the winner of Chisago Lakes Forest Lake. They're playing in Chisago Lakes. That would be Tuesday night here at Rebel Stadium. Annabelle Johnson got hit up high. And that'll be a foul. Don't know if we're going to see the yellow here on Rickley. So, and we are going to get a yellow. So Rickley is going to head to the sideline on that personal foul. And this will be Johnson way outside, well outside the 12-meter fan. And now we'll get everybody set. Yeah, just got some updates also from some of the guys up here in the PA booth, Centennial and Andover, both winners. Jurassic shot blocked on the ground. Picks up her own ground ball. How about following your shot? That was terrific. Jurassic has the goal, trying to get to the front, give it, gives it up. It's blocked almost right in the middle of it, and it finally comes to Schultz. And Schultz is going to get it because I think they reached into that crease area. And, or excuse me, the other goaltender, Megan Holmgrimson, a ninth grader, clears it off to the right. Now it's on the ground and grabbed by the Tornadoes. All right, what do you got, Joe? We have, uh, as I mentioned, Centennial picked up a win, as did Andover in girls lacrosse. So they advance and they will face one another on Tuesday. At Andover, that'll be a 7 o'clock start. Champlin Park will be at home against Chisago Lakes or Forest Lake here in Section 7. Section final Thursday night at the high seed. Here's Champlin Park beginning their run. That was Caitlin Kiffmeyer. Kiffmeyer is senior. They're going to get everybody set, and then Kiffmeyer will make a decision. Also, Chisago Lakes 11-6 over Forest Lake. So Chisago Lakes would come here on Tuesday night, so we're set. As far as Section 7, girls lacrosse. Of course, the two teams we cover, Champlin Park and Andover, very much alive. The number one and number two seeds. Of course, the win tonight for Champlin Park makes it 12 in a row as it went back to 2011, season's 2011. And Champlin Park has pulled out victory each of those seasons and a couple of occasions played each other twice. Ground ball caught in the middle, shot over the top. Annabelle Johnson, pretty feed inside. And that went off the stick of Schindelbeck. She just couldn't gain control. Right back into the middle, and it comes to the goalie, Holmgrimson. I don't have shots on goal, and that, which was faced by Jaden Schultz, but I'm telling you, it had to be close to 40. A lot of shots. That ground ball picked up by Kiffmeyer for the Rebels. Right back into the middle, grabbed by Schindelbeck. She'll begin her run up the far side. Coming up on a minute and a half to go in this one. Champlin Park well on their way to win number 13. They're 12 and 2 at the moment, soon to be 13 and 2. And they get it into the middle. Good feed, and that's blocked. Nice job by Holmgrenson. And now the clear to the near side goes out. And that, that's one of the things the tornadoes, too many turnovers on those clears to each side. And it's controlled there by Senescal. Arabella Senescal. Right into the middle. Back down. Here's Alm, Layla Alm, playing her last minute of high school action. And now it's Yelly. Yelly gets knocked down. And We'll see if a yellow card comes out here. No, they're going to play on. Yelly. Right back into the middle, and it's caught. Tana. Great speed. Look at this run. Put it on the ground. Can't get it back. She's had a series of strong oh, yeah. runs and rushes up. Uh. That's Addie Dale over there. Grabs it. She'll set and come back. Final seconds of this one at Rebel Stadium. Champlin Park will move on. And get it down the field on the deck. Jamplin Park, can they get a shot? Jurassic with it. 
Side of the net, goes around, seconds remaining. Can she get to the front and get a shot? No. Champlin Park's gonna win this section seven quarterfinal tonight, 18 to five. They led it 12 to four at the half. And what a performance for the senior, Megan Peter, four goals. Terrific game for Peter. And Joe, they shored their balance up and down the lineup. Good defensively, good on the attack, and certainly good goal tending as well. Paige Hagenbart, they did it all tonight. They not only their depth in scoring, but also the diversity of that age. Just the one yep. senior starter, Peters picks up four, but then you have juniors. And Johnson, she had a couple of her, a hat trick, I believe. And then you also have others and freshmen who just constantly bring that pressure and score ability. Perfect and impressive win, 18 to five. Big thanks to our friends here at Champlin Park High School and Rebel Stadium. Big thanks to our QCTV crew led by Taylor Johnson. And on behalf of my play-by-play -play partner, Joe Rulin, in this Section 7 Girls Lacrosse Semifinal Champlin Park beats Anoka 18-5. Good night.